All right, I have 201, so I think we'll go ahead and get started. This is so exciting to me. Um, and I have a feeling it's exciting to some of the other administrators who are on the call. Welcome students. We haven't seen students in a little while. And it's delightful to see your faces. It, it's really very heartwarming. Um, so welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. Um, my name is Laura oster Olland, and I'm the Vice Provost for Student Affairs here at NDSU. I've been um, had the privilege of serving in that position for a few years, and it's really my job to um, help uh, students experience NDSU in a positive way. And there's a whole team of people who, um, who are a part of that, and many of them are on this call today. But I wanted to open with just a few um, sort of personal words for, for you students. You know, I've been at NDSU for a long time. It's hard to believe, but over 30 years ago, I came here as a student myself. And I love this community. It's my alma mater. It's my workplace. And it's, it's my community. Uh, and never in my wildest dreams in that 30 years could I have imagined that we would be in this situation. Um, learning remotely, providing student services remotely, and holding a remote online open forum. I mean, this is really incredible. But this is where we find ourselves. And if there's one thing I know about NDSU and the Bison community, it is that we rise to the challenges before us. This is a great university. It's a student-focused community. And that's why we're here today in this open forum. With all of the changes facing us right now, uh, we wanted a chance to hear from you, the students, directly. Hear your voices hear your concerns. And to, so today we hope to do that. We hope to answer your questions. We may not have answers to all of the questions that you have, um, but we will do our very best to hear your concerns, to seek out answers, and, um, and help us all move forward together. So again, it's just great to see you. Um, so here's what I hope to, we hope to accomplish today and maybe some tips. I'm sure you're all experts at this kind of online remote environment by now, but um, a few sort of housekeeping things. First of all, um, the, there is uh, the moderator today is Christy Steinman. And so we have all of your mics um, muted, I think, to start. And it's not clear to me if you can unmute your unmute your own mic or if Christy will need to do that. I think you can, looks like you can. Um, so they've been muted and that's great. Um, that's the way we'd like you to leave them until you'd like to speak. Um, so let me just kind of lay out what we hope to do and then I'll talk a little bit more about mechanics. So first, um, we want to just talk about some of the things that we know and give you some updates. And this may not be brand new news to everyone. I think they'll, you will have seen emails about these topics, but we wanted to just cover some of those def definitive things that we know. Um, next, we're gonna discuss some of the things that we're still working on, still trying to figure out. Um, and then, so throughout the call, um, I'd invite you to ask questions and you can do that using the chat box feature. Um, you'll find the little thought bubble at the bottom of your screen where it says chat. And so you can type questions, um, but you can also unmute the mic and simply ask a question. And we'll pause a few times throughout the open forum so that you can do that. Um, and then if we're not able to answer your question today, or if you have a question that might be a little more personal in nature or specific to your specific um, circumstances, um, we're going to ask that you email Casey Peterson and I'll ask Christy if she wouldn't mind typing his name in the chat box um, and email. Casey is our Dean of Students and uh, she'll put his email up over in the chat box. We are also going to record this today. So I just wanted you to be aware that that was happening as well. So, um, so I think we'll go ahead and jump in. I want to, to next introduce, and again, we won't talk this whole time. We'll talk just a few minutes at the beginning and then we'll leave it up to students to, um, to jump in. Um, but I would like to introduce our provost, um, Dr. Margaret Fitzgerald, and she wants to just say a few words to welcome you as well and talk about some of the things that relate specifically to your academic studies. Sure. 
Thank you, Laura. Good afternoon, everybody. It's great to see and hopefully hear your voices in the next few minutes. Um, as the provost of NDSU, I'm also considered the chief academic officer. So I oversee um, the academic affairs of the university, the colleges, departments, hiring curriculum. And that's why you've heard from me this week about things like pass fail grading option, extension of the drop date, you know, things that we're trying to do to help make this semester a little easier um, as we're going through these monumental changes here at the university. Um, one of my colleagues very wisely said yesterday that um, we're still the same Bison family that we've always been. We are just doing things in a different way now, but uh, NDSU is still a place for you to learn and grow and question and thrive. And so we're just doing that now in a remote environment. So uh, just a few things. If you take a look at our NDSU homepage on the website every day, you'll see updates that have to do with the COVID-19 epidemic, but also, or I should say pandemic, and but I'll, you'll also see helpful tips for you as students. Uh, there's a great story on tips for virtual learning and advice from other students today that you might wanna take a look at. Um, we will be doing remote learning through the rest of spring semester and into summer school. Um, just to keep everybody safe and healthy or as healthy as we can during the pandemic. Commencement has been rescheduled to December 18th. I know that's a big um, change for those of you who are planning to walk across the stage this spring, but I promise we will try to make it a very special event for you in December as well. Um, you will be able to get caps and gowns through the NDSU bookstore by ordering online so that you'll be able to take some pictures and do some social media things in May on your graduation date to share with your friends. Um, the pass-fail grading option that I uh, sent you an email about earlier this week, that is something that you'll probably want to consult with your academic advisor about or faculty in the program that you're a part of. Um, Many of your courses can probably be changed to pass fail grading, just take some of the pressure off this semester as you're adapting to online learning, your faculty members are adapting to online teaching. But the thing you'll want to be aware of is whether or not you need certain letter grades to advance in a course sequence in your program, or if you need a certain letter grade to get admitted to a professional program, in that case, you'll want the letter grades. And the letter grades are the default. So you'll get a letter grade unless you file the form to ask for the pass-fail grading option. Um, and my, my email had more information about that option in it. There are several people on this call who can answer questions as well. Um, we've had a lot of questions lately about what's going to happen with field experiences, internships, lab experiences, clinicals. Um, the best answer I have for you at this point is it depends. Um, some people have been able to do their internships remotely this semester. For example, you might be working with an engineering firm that will let you do things from a distance. Um, a lot of our students that are in education have been able to get clinical hours or student teaching done because they're helping their supervising teachers in those school districts go with remote learning. Um, health professions has been a little bit more challenging in some disciplines because the medical facilities aren't taking students right now. They're working, you know, to care for their patients in those facilities. But some of the accrediting bodies have been a little bit more lenient as to what counts for those hours. So things are evolving over time and we're trying to keep up with those changes and share them with you. Um, we have great resources on our NDSU web pages for learning remotely. One of my favorites is on ITS. It's on the home page. You just click on learn remotely and there are all kinds of helpful resources there for you. But the home page has some suggestions as well. Um, 
the Dean of Students, Casey Peterson and his staff, as well as the academic deans in all the colleges are gathering input from students on a regular basis. And I synthesize some of that information, no names of course, um, and share it with our faculty. So they know what some of the challenges um, you're having are like. Uh, we know that there's not great bandwidth in rural Minnesota if you're trying to do an online test or, or something with a lot of people, it might be challenging for you. Um, we know that a lot of the students are adapting to multiple platforms. There's Blackboard, there's um, textbook company platforms, there's Skype, there's Zoom, there's, you know, a lot going on and you're trying to master that. So I am sharing that with the faculty so they know just to be kind. <laughs> I think it's the bottom line with my messages. Be understanding, be generous. Um, Registration for summer and fall semester is proceeding as normal. We encourage you to register for summer session. We want the summer session to be a success for students in helping you finish your degree and we want to prepare for fall semester. As I said, there are a lot of unknowns, but we are working on things every day to help you finish your degrees and um, you've got a whole team of people here behind you to support you. So. And I'll, I'll, I'll turn it back to Laura. That's good. All right, so the, I'll talk a little bit about um, some of the featured student services that are still available to you, but know that this is only the tip of the iceberg um, in terms of, uh, you know, again, a whole team of people and departments and services um, are available to you. I wanted to say a quick word about one of the things we did the very first week we, we learned that we were moving online. Um, We've referred to the Dean of Students, Casey Peterson, pri previously, and he really mobilized um, a, a large group of faculty and staff to divide up the undergraduate student body into um, groups of 100 students, and um, each of those students is being sent an email on a weekly basis to just check in and, and give you a point of contact and help you navigate this um, this challenging time. So I hope that you've received those emails. I know we've gotten quite a few responses from students who appreciated the emails. I also know you're getting inundated with emails. <laughs> and so um, there's lots of different ways for you to find out information and, and that's just one. A few of the other student services I wanted to uh, draw your attention to, um, there is a website that sort of um, has centralized many of these and I believe uh, Christy just um, put that in the chat box uh, right as we're speaking. Um, but a few that I wanna draw your attention to, student health and student counseling are um, probably at top of my list. It's really important that we take care of ourselves physically and mentally right now. So our student health service, as many of you know, is a full service uh, clinic and um, they have physicians and nurse practitioners and radiologists and lab techs and pharmacists ready to serve you. And while we do want you to call ahead before coming into the clinic because um, we need to be extra cautious in this time uh, with the pandemic, um, we do want you to call and there are still students coming in for appointments when appropriate. And there are appointments going on uh, over the phone and will soon to be over video chat as well. Um, so you can access physicians, you can access um, nurses and nurse practitioners and all kinds of medical assistance. So that is available and we just really encourage you to use that. Um, the counseling service likewise is fully operational and um, they are doing e-visits with students. And, and you know, you don't need to feel like you have a diagnosable mental health concern to, to call the counseling center or the student health service. Both entities deal with mental health concerns, but this could be just because you're feeling lonely or anxious, and many of us are during this time. And I know that lots of students are accessing this, and, and uh, two students have already told me how helpful it was to them just to call and, and talk through some things and how much better they felt. So just want to remind you of that. ACE tutoring is up and running. They've got small group tutoring for a lot of the general education courses. And I believe they're using Blackboard Collaborate for that. And they are also happy to consult if you're just struggling to this different 
this transition to remote learning and what that means for you as a student and they'd be happy to talk through tips and and give you some ideas and then the career service uh, office uh, career and advising services uh, has been really amazing in, in shifting all services to a virtual setting, including reviewing resumes for students, interview preparation, and you know, those of you who are graduates might be concerned about jobs. There are employers out there who still want to hire right now, and they've got lots of jobs listed on CareerLink. So I encourage you to check those out. Um, uh, I know that our internship coordinator is also working very hard on um, remote internships for the summer, uh, as well as uh, some in-person ones. So, so please contact them for that. And then virtually, virtual advising as well. So as uh, the provost mentioned, uh, you have this option to choose a pass or a fail in a class. And if you wanna talk with an advisor about um, what that means for you and what might be best, um, it encourage you to reach out to an advisor. I'll say another word about that briefly in a few minutes. And don't forget about one stop. Uh, you know, those um, happy uh, folks willing to help you who are in the main floor of the union are still there. And some of them are working from home, but some are still there and they're answering your phone calls and um, they can get you to the services that you need. So just now um, a word or two about um, some things we're still working on and then we'll open it up to your questions. Um, Federal financial aid. Um, you may have heard that uh, Congress passed a bill last, last week or the week before um, called the CARES Act, and it's specifically to provide some assistance to um, higher education or that one portion of the bill is. And uh, we are waiting for guidance from the Department of Education in how we can get that money uh, into the hands of the students who need it most. Details are still being worked out on that. And as soon as we know uh, what kind of funds are available, we will get messages out to the students that qualify. One really important thing about that is that you need to fill out the federal application for uh, free application for federal student aid, FAFSA. I think many of you are experienced with that and know what that is. Um, and many, most of you have already done that if you've qualified for loans or grants, but if you haven't, that will be really critical in, in um, providing access to these new federal funds. Um, so again, stay tuned on that. Um, there are also our students asking questions about who, are, who may be unable to pay their bill um, in a timely manner, even for this semester. And customer account services will have information on their website very soon. It's not quite finished, but it'll be out, um, I, I believe, in the next day or two about some different payment plans or short-term term loans and, and some things along those nature along that nature and and then encourage you to also call one stop if your financial situation has changed drastically from when you filled out your FAFSA there may be some opportunities uh, for access to additional loans or grants on a case-by-case -case basis so um, just please reach out so those are the things we're still working on and we'll just keep you very um, apprised of as we learn more so at this time, I guess I'll, I'll pause and, and see if there are any questions that people want to ask uh, verbally or uh, in the chat box. And Christy, if I'm, I can't multitask because I'm over 30, but um, <laughs> if there has been any questions that I've missed, I'd, I'd welcome you to read them. I don't think you've missed. Um, do you want to touch on residence halls and dining updates? Sure, sure. I'll just uh, I'll briefly talk about that and then maybe Christy, you could help me by posting. I think there is a link um, in our um, document that we can post on that. So um, for those students that did live in residence halls or um, had dining contracts and uh, for those students that did leave campus, we still have a few students on campus. But for those who, students who did leave when we um, indicated um, the uh, possibility of doing so, uh, they will receive a 40% um, refund on their room and board cost they've already paid. And that really coincides with the um, refund schedule of the university system and the, the point at, um, at which we are at in the semester. Um, so we are hoping all students would have received um, individualized communication about that from Residence Life. But if not, there are links posted there that describe that those refunds. Um, 
there was also refunds provided for students who both on campus and off campus who had parking permits that they're no longer using. So again, the, the unused portion of that uh, will be refunded to students. And we had another question. Um, if we're graduating the spring semester 2020, should we still be ordering our regalia now and following the normal graduation checklist to prepare for the commencement date in December? Hey, Alex. My name is Jackie and I work within registration and records and to clarify you're certainly welcome to order that regalia now if you want. You could certainly wait until December as well, but that option is there if you'd like. Um, yes, the the graduation part of completing your degree, you'll want to make sure that those pieces are completed so that um, everything is taken care of at the end of spring, but we will invite you and provide more information um, later this summer probably um, about the de details for the commencement ceremony in December. Any other questions? I see one here that says, how does GP, how does GPAs work with pass fail system? Does one of our registrars want to take that? Rennell? Sure. This is um, Rennell Ingalls. I'm um, currently interim registrar along with Jackie. Um, when you opt for a pass fail grade, the if, if you get a pass in the class, um, that will not calculate into your GPA. You will get the you will earn the credit for the course, but it does not factor into your GPA. So it doesn't harm your GPA, but it also doesn't help your GPA. On the other hand, should you fail the class, that does get calculated into your GPA. So um, right now, the, the, the grading for a pass would be considered at least a D or higher. So if you have further questions on that, just let me know. I'm going to take some of these chat questions a little bit out of order since we're still on the pass fail topic. Um, with moving to a pass-fail system, how would that affect eligibility for university scholarships? That's a good question. And I, depending on who the scholarship is through, um, I don't work with scholarships. So if somebody else on the call, if, if you'd want to take that, I don't know if scholarship um, committees have thought about that yet. Jeff, do you want to take a stab at that? I can try. So my interpretation of what we would be looking at, so for instance, National Merit, NDC Presidential, Presidential Honor, Provost Awards, those renewable scholarships, uh, we'll still be looking at uh, your overall grade point average um, for renewal of those. And if, if it's close to uh, the minimum GPA, we would look at those on a case-by-case -case basis. So the, the, that, that was Jeff Jacobs. He's our uh, Director of Financial Aid and Scholarships. Um, he's the expert. He's going to be the one to figure out how to get this federal money in the hands of our students. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. <laughs> That's all right. No pressure. Um, so in, to also summarize kind of what Jeff was saying, so the pass-fail option shouldn't hurt or help your situation. It would be a neutral option in general for scholarships. Unless you yes, I, I believe that is correct. Yep, that should be. We have a few more pass fail questions. Um, there's a question on why May 1st was chosen as the due date when many will not yet know their current grade in a course. May 1st was selected because um, that following Monday, official grade rosters will be generated. So faculty who have prepared in advance um, they may have uh, required a final um, exam or paper or something to come in, but May 5th or May 4th is when we are going to be generating the official grade rosters so that Friday before May 1st was chosen so that the grading basis could be processed um, for that official roster. 
Okay, we had another question about benefits and downfalls to pass fail. And it looks like Colin chimed in with a couple of things. I don't know if anyone has anything to add to those. Um, so, uh, what's the first part of that one again? Uh, benefits to pass fail or downfalls to pass fail. Yeah, I think if, you know, sometimes you do have to weigh the benefit for yourself and also in the program that you're in. But the benefit is that if you're at a place where you feel like your GPA is okay and you just want to try to get through a course, um, have a little bit of that pressure taking off, taken off this semester, you know you're going to get at least a D or higher, um, it's probably a safe bet then to go ahead and request the pass grade. Now on the flip side, um, one, of the, one of the pieces that we need to keep in mind is that you can't walk away from your class right now. So even if you have an A in the course, you do have to finish. You have to go through the duration of the course submitting your assignments because we wouldn't want that to turn into a fail. So the benefit is um, to, to kind of relieve some pressure on yourself. Give yourself a break this semester if you already have what you feel is a good GPA. So that could be an option for you. Um, if you are, however, failing the course, it will calculate into your GPA. Um, so that is something to consider there. And we do want you to finish the course. We don't want you just to walk away at this point and call it good. Okay, we had one more question about pass fail. Um, is it only an option for undergrads or is it available to grad students? At this point, I know we've made the decision for undergrads. I'm not sure where the decision is at for graduate students. I can talk a little bit about that. Um, the Dean of the Graduate School is working with graduate leaders on campus to decide if um, at the graduate level, we don't have a past fail option. We have a satisfactory unsatisfactory option. So when master's and doctoral students take thesis or dissertation credits, they're graded on an S or U basis. So the Dean of the Graduate School is talking with graduate faculty to find out if we want to extend that SU grading option to what we call didactic courses a semester or regular lecture based or experiential learning courses that they would normally take um, for a letter grade. So that decision has not been made yet. I haven't received a recommendation from them yet, but they are working on it. And again, for the same reasons with um, undergraduate students, people are adapting to the online learning environment. There is a lot of stress because of the pandemic and some people are just finding that it will help them be successful this semester in their classes. So more to come on, on the option for grad students. Great, we have a couple of questions about fees. Um, the first one was, when will we receive our refunds for dorm and meal plan? I, I'm not sure if there's anyone on the call that can actually answer that, but I think it said, um, it, it was soon. I remember reading that it was not, not to be, you know, a far date in the future, but it could, I'm guessing that is on the website. Um, but if we can't find that, we will def we could definitely get back to you if you wouldn't mind sending an email to Casey.Peterson, P-E-T-E-R-S-O-N. I do recall that they were going to put refunds on, uh, on into direct deposit if you had a direct deposit set up, so you would probably get it faster that way. And if you didn't have direct deposit, a check was going to be mailed, but and I don't know if um, anyone on the call actually has that information. There's a couple people. Um, Colin said April 17th, he thought the refunds are coming. I think Colin is on RHA as well. Um, and then another person said dorm refunds hit accounts yesterday. Excellent. Um, and then the other question was if there is a refund for spring activities, sports wellness center fees. Oh, Laura, you're muted. Hi, thanks for that question. Um, you know, at this time, uh, the university is not um, planning to refund either tuition or fees. 
Um, students will earn the credits that they have registered and paid for, um, and as well as um, services that are available online. Um, you, know, you, know, you noted the one example that, that's difficult. Obviously, you cannot access the wellness center right now, uh, but there are lots of wellness-related services available. Um, there is, um, again, I think we referred to the website earlier in this um, call about all of the many services that are available. So just like we're just taking uh, uh, classroom instruction online, we are taking uh, services online as well. And um, we know that uh, isn't everybody's pre preferred choice that the NDSU experience is um, uh, uh, an in-person experience, but we, we believe that we are um, providing that experience in, in a different way at this point. So if I just might add, um, ITS has done a lot of remote workshops to help students adjust to the um, online or remote learning environment. They've been popular, so that's one way your, your um, fees are still being used. The reference librarians and library services are still available to you at a distance, so I would encourage you to take advantage of that. And um, one of the things I learned in graduate school is always befriend a good reference librarian. It'll make your life so much easier, so you can contact them by a distance and they'll be happy to help you. I have heard the noon workouts through the Wellness Center are really good, but that would mean I would have to exercise, so I haven't tried that. So some of those services are still there for you, Jeff. I made you laugh, yay, someone got it. <laughs> Laura, I just found um, the email that went out to students regarding room and board refunds. Um, the timeline indicates Tuesday, April 7th, residence hall meal plans and parking credits are applied to student accounts in Campus Connection. Um, and then refund checks not processed to allow for any residence hall damage charges to be applied if applicable. Um, check and direct deposit refunds will be generated to students beginning Thursday, April 16th. Um, students with direct deposit will receive their funds approximately three, three business days later. So, Thanks, Linda. You're welcome. That, that might be one of the things I would want to add to the conversation also is just to make sure students are reading the emails that are sent out because there are a lot of them going out right now and a lot of them are long, but they have a lot of good information in them as well. We had another question. Um, if you're a grad student and you're hoping to defend this semester or in the summer, is it encouraged to do a virtual defense? Um, yes, that is an option. So you can still defend in a timely way. I would say work with your major professor, major advisor, and your committee members to determine how they would like to do it. Um, we've had several defenses already held virtually. It's gone well. Zoom is a, is a good way to do it in terms of being able to give your presentation and take questions. But the graduate school is, is definitely supporting remote defenses for spring, summer. It's hard to say. Um, we don't know how long the virus is going to keep us out of commission for face-to-face -face meetings and classes, so it wouldn't hurt to schedule remotely. And if by chance you can see everyone in person, that'll be great, but maybe plan for remote. I am not seeing other questions. So if I missed any, if you want to ping me, but I think we got through all of the ones that have been submitted. I'm going to put Casey's email back on here, though, on the um, chat, just in case anyone wants to follow up with a um, with an email directly to Casey. 
While we're pausing, I just want to um, deliver a shout out to Mason Rademacher and Joseph Fulmer, who are your student body president and vice president. They have been really proactive in advocating for the best interests of students this semester and, and moving into the future. So I appreciate um, the information they gathered and provided to me on pass fail grading and other alternatives. And so um, it's it's nice to know that your student government is working well for you. Thanks, Margaret. I'll, I'll make an additional plug that um, voting is going on today for the new student body uh, president and vice president. I'm not sure what time it closes out, but if um, Mason or Joe are on the call, you could feel free to chime in because it closes out sometime today and then I believe it will be announced later. So if you're on, please speak. Yeah, sorry, I was trying to find the unmute button. Uh, voting is open today until 5 o'clock, and I can drop the link in the chat as well if any students in the line want to click vote if they haven't yet. So I'll send that over here in just a second. Hey, Mason, your, um, your mic wasn't working very well. Do you want to take a slower um, run at that? And if we still can't hear you, I'm wondering if Kim Bremer can, can jump, chime in. Yeah, I'll give it another shot here. Can you hear me okay now, Laura? Perfect. So voting today will close at 5 p.m. for the second day, and then election results will be announced tonight. I will put in the chat here in just a couple of seconds the link for any students who are on the call for them to be able to cast their ballot. So they can just click that link and take them there for them to do so. Okay, I think we got most of that, and um, thanks, Mason. So, and he said that he'd put the link for voting in the chat box so we can wait for that. I'm, I'm guessing what Mason just demonstrated was some of the internet difficulties that uh, folks have in some of the rural areas of Minnesota. <laughs> or many people in the household being online at the same time. We know those are real struggles. The link to vote is also um, accessible on the MyNDSU homepage uh, in the, one of the alert boxes up at the top of the page once you log in. Thanks, Kim. That was Kim Bremer, Director of Student Activities, Interim Director of Student Activities. All right, any more questions? Laura, I'll just close out here again with that pass-fail option. Um, if there's any questions, you can certainly contact our office. But I would also recommend contacting um, your major department area to find out if there would possibly be restrictions for the pass fail grading. So, or we can we can point you in a direction to if you should um, have other questions. And just to add, universities all across the country are extending their pass-fail option this semester. So it's not going to be unusual to see student transcripts that have the P option for courses this year. I, I believe the registrar is also going to put a, a notation on our transcripts about um, what an unusual semester this has been for students. All right. Well, this has been wonderful. Thank you for showing up, students and, and um, staff and administrators, and um, for the questions that you had, and, and thanks for being you. Um, you know, as we wrap up today, I'm thinking a lot about the history and permanence of NDSU. Um, it was founded in 1890, um, and um, interestingly, maybe to me anyway, <laughs> I, gradu I graduated in 1990 uh, with the 100, you know, uh, 100th anniversary class. Um, and here we are in 2020. Um, and you know, if you think about all of that time and the thing, the, pe the students and the people of NDSU that the faculty and staff have been through, world wars and um, terrorist attacks on US soil and you know, civil unrest and just lots of tumultuous world events and through all of those difficult times the NDSU experience is really what unites us and 
I'm thinking about when I welcome students at orientation, I talk about how NDSU is um, that it, this experience will transform them in positive ways. And I remind them that it's not what they accomplish here, it's the journey that they have here that will really transform them. And so, as I said in the beginning, you know, NDSU will rise, you will rise as students, and you're who make up this community. Uh, we're here to support you and to help you because you're going to go out and impact the world. And that's really what this is all about. So we hope that this was helpful for you today and that we've answered um, some of your questions and just know that you have a whole team of people here, you know, wanting to hold you up and, and help you uh, get through this. So please take care and stay well. Bye.